All right, this is ninth grade lit. This is uh, our discussion of Saul Rowland as we uh, are, uh, continue to read and prepare for the test. Do you remember what question we need to go on? I'll tell you where we started. We answer. 41 is the last. All right, so we are 41? We need to be answered. 41. All right, so on 110, if you want to turn to one, page 110. Uh, actually, uh, isn't that 110? You said question 41, didn't you? But we're talking about question 41. So who can answer that for us? That's back on page 110. What connection is insinuated between bravery and battle and spiritual redemption. Um, we, I wrote down that we skipped this, but I'm going to answer it anyway. There's a suggestion by Turpin here that if you fight and die and fight well and die, you're going to heaven. Um, I think we've, we've heard stories about, say, Muslim terrorists, who suicide bombers who've been promised 72 virgins if they blow up this hotel or blow up you know, this, this, this building. Um, it's like a promise. You die, you get rewarded immediately by going to heaven. Uh, that is not the way it works. But that's sort of suggested here, even by these Christians, that if you fight well, you go to heaven. Is the whole thing with like the all that stuff? Is that an actual Muslim belief, or is that something they've come up with? I have never read um, the Quran. Uh, there is a lot of debate about the terrorist movements, and is that really in the Quran or not? So we have to ask people who are more uh, knowledgeable about that. Uh, there's the, the Crusades, for instance, that, that, which is what Christians did. Um, I think it was very uh, hard to justify that according to scripture. And we're, we're asked every day to put on the helmet of salvation, sword of spirit, breastplate of righteousness, all that, but not literally. So we're not to go out with swords that actually kill people who disagree with us in our faith. So I don't know how they justify that. All right, so. Uh, we need to do 42. Mm -hmm. All right, examples of lead um, in 116 through 118. Let's come back to that. <laughs> I need to look at it. We'll come back to 42. 43, what is the effect of the author's decisions to detail a series of one-on-one -on -one battles rather than simply describing the chaos of war? This is an opinion question, and it could apply to anything so far in the book. Why would he spend time talking about Roland fighting this particular Saracen knight rather than focusing on the big battle that's also taking place? Do you think they feel closer to the characters? A good answer. It personalizes. We can't relate to 400,000 Muslims or 100,000 French, but we can relate to one Frenchman named Roland. Good answer. Okay, so um, we skipped a lot of this, which was on purpose. So let's, uh, let's go to 114. Right. Number 124. I'll start. All right, we're on page 114, number 124. Everybody there? We've answered up the question uh, 43, but we skipped 42. So we'll come back to 42. All right, the Prince Grand Doing was a good knight and gallant. Strong of his hands and valorous, valorous, valorous in battle. Athor him now comes Roland, the great captain. 
He never met him, but he knew him instanter. By his proud aspect and by his noble stature, his haughty looks and his bearing manner. In other words, this Muslim knight <coughs> knew Roland was, like, this had to be Roland because just the way he looks. He, he looks like the best guy they've got. We cannot, he cannot help but immortal fear unmans him. Fain would he fly, but what's the good he cannot? The count assails him with a ferocious valor that to the nasal the whole helmet is shattered. Cloven the nose and the teeth and the palate, the jazz rein, hauberk, and the breastbone and backbone, both silver bows from off the golden saddle. Horseman and horse, clean asunder he slashes. Did you see, hear, hear what that said? Horseman and horse and horseman, clean asunder. Asunder to me suggests in two pieces. So he he cuts the horse and the rider in half. I don't believe that's possible with a sword, one man. Um, lifeless he leaves, and the pieces pass Paddy. Yeah, he, Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall, and Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the kings, of course, all the kings made, couldn't couldn't put him back together again. Um, the men of Spain fell a wailing for sadness. The French cry, "What strokes and what a champion!" Um, so the, did Roland just kill the? Strike? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Charlotte, would you read? Um, 21, 20, <coughs> 125. Yes. Thanks. Fierce in the battle and marvelous in great, the Frenchmen cry their burnished spears away. Where have you seen how many men in fame, how many warriors and glory there in slain? Heaped up, piping, piping, mouth. Pell mail. It's Pell -mail. one of the words, um, that extra credit word that means disordered confusion. Would, at this point, you would think the French are still winning, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, they just routed. They just routed the Saracens. The Saracens are retreating. That would not be the case. So, uh, uh, Grayson, read one twenty-six. Wonders the battle and rejoice by sea rest. French fight on with rage and fury fell. They lo they lop off wrists, few ribs and spines of dregs. They cleave their harness through the to the living flesh. On the green ground, the blood runs clear and red. The phantoms say we cannot stand the stress. The French fatherland be cursed of Mohammed. Your sons are bravest of all the sons of men. There is none of them but cries Mar Marzil to help. Ride, ride, O king, for we are far best set. Um, okay, so um, do you see any uh, hyperbole there at the very end for Grace and Red? Why is that hyperbole? Yeah, he said these are the, great, the best sons 